The next step in our project is to fill in our three methods, is original, is possible, and is real, with actual code to perform that work. Down here in Xcode, we can see the code right here for is original. And right now always returns true. It always says this word's an original word never used before. Now, as you can see, this thing accepts a word string parameter and returns a Boolean saying, is the word original or not? We're going to change that so it calls another method which will check whether our used words array already contains a word that was provided. We'll say, rather than return true, return not used words dot contains word. So used words dot contains word will return true if used words contains the word. But what we care about here is the word original. So we want the inverse of that. We want to say, if it contains that thing, return false. The word is not original. Otherwise, return true. That's why we have this not operator here to flip the result of contains. That's one method down. Next is the is possible method up here. Again, takes a word string as its only parameter and returns true or false, depending on whether the word's possible or not. Now, obviously, we want to be sure that we can make the word the user inputted from a title word using each letter only once. And a nice, easy solution here is to loop through every letter of the player's answer, seeing whether it exists in the eight-letter start word we're playing with. If it does, we remove the letter from the start word, then continue the loop. So if we try and use the same letter twice, it will exist the first time, but then get removed so it does not exist the second time, and the check will fail. Now, in project four, we use the contains method of strings to see if one string exists inside another. Here we need something more precise. If it exists, where does it exist? And that extra information allows us to remove the character from our word so it won't be used twice. Swift has a separate method for this called first index of, which will return the position of the substring if it exists or nil otherwise. To put it into practice, let's write is possible now. We'll first say guard var temp word equals title question mark dot lowercase else return false. So make sure we have a title in our navigation controller. And if so, bring that out and lowercase it and put it into a temporary word variable. Now, previously we've used lots of guard let. Guard bar is the same thing, but it makes a variable of the result. Next, we'll say for letter in word, if let position equals temp word dot first index of letter temp word dot remove at position else return false and after the loop return true so most of this code is new there's all sorts going in here it should compile cleanly though yep looking good so we're going to loop over all the letters in the word so if they're typed in cat we'll go c a t we'll then say attempt to find the first time that letter appears in our temporary word so look for c and find that then a then find that and t and find that and if that works if it can find a c then an a then a t it will remove that letter from the temporary word so the word will shrink each time we evaluate it so we can't use the same letter twice but if we cannot find that letter, if there is no T in there, they've typed cat for their word, then we return false immediately. Stop checking the word and get out saying no. However, if after the loop finishes, we've gone through all the letters in our word and they've all been successfully found and removed, we return true. This is a good word to use. Now it's time for our final method down here, is real. Is this a real word or not? To make this work, we'll use a UIKit class called UI Text Checker. This is an iOS class that spots spelling errors, which makes it great for knowing if a given word's real or not. Instead of writing return true, we'll say let checker equals UI Text Checker, let range equals NS range, with the location being zero, and the length being word.utf16.count, then let misspelled range equals checker dot range of misspelled word in and press return to fill that in. The word is our word. 
The range is our range. Start position is index zero. Wrap will be false. And language will be en for English. And finally, we'll return misspelled range dot location equals equals ns not found. Now the new class here, this UI text checker, that's why it comes from UI kit. And it doesn't really play well with Swift strings, which explains some of the rest of the code you can see. In line 98, we tell this thing the range you want to scan inside our word. We must start at zero and scan the full length of the word. Now we've got to use this really strange format here, word.utf16.count, because UI text checker is not good with Swift strings. It likes to have Objective-C strings, an older style string. So to make it work correctly, we have to make this NS range type, specifying the length of our word by hand using its UTF-16 count. In the as possible method, we looped over each letter by using the word as an array. But in this new code, we use word.utf16 instead. Why? The answer is an annoying backwards compatibility quirk. Swift strings natively store international characters as individual characters, e.g. the letter E acute is stored as precisely that, rather than E then acute. However, UIKit was written in Objective-C before Swift strings came along, and it uses a different character system called UTF-16, short for 16-bit Unicode transformation format, where the accent and the letter are stored separately. It's subtle difference, and often it isn't a difference at all, but it's becoming increasingly problematic because of the rise of emoji. Emoji are actually just special character combinations behind the scenes, and they're measured differently with Swift strings and UTF-16 strings. Swift strings count them as one-letter strings, but UTF-16 considers them to be two-letter strings. So if we use count for our strings with UIKit methods, we run the risk of miscounting the string length. Now I realize this might seem like pointless additional complexity, so let me try and give you a simple rule. When you're working with UIKit, Sprite Kit or any other Apple framework, use UTF-16 count for the character count. If it's your own code, i.e. looping over characters and handling each one individually, then use count instead. Next we call range of misspelled word in. This wants five parameters, but we only care about the first two and the last one. This first one is the string to scan, the word the user typed, make sure it's a good word or not. Second one is how much of the word to scan. In our case, we want the full word from location zero to the full length of the word. And the last is the language to check the dictionary with, which is English because our start.txt file contains English words. Parameters three and four aren't useful here, but for the sake of completeness, number three here, starting at, select a range in our string where the text checker should start scanning, allowing us to do things like find next mistake, find next mistake, and find next mistake, and similar in large amounts of text. And wrap false means this thing shouldn't start at the beginning of the range if no misspelled words were found starting from parameter three. Very neat, but not helpful here. Now there's one further hiccup here, which is where we return from this method. Calling range of misspelled word in returns an NS range structure, which tells us where the misspelling was found, just like we have an NS range up here. But what we care about is whether any misspelling was found. And if nothing was found, our NS range will have a special location, NS not found. Usually, location would tell you where the misspelling started, but NS not found, this thing, is telling us the word is spelled correctly, i.e. it's a valid word. Now, in case you're curious, NS range predates Swift by a long way, and therefore doesn't have access to optionals. NS not found is effectively a magic number that means not found, because there's no way of saying nil here, and it's assigned to a constant to make it easier to use. Now you'll notice my return specified in an unusual way as part of an operation involving equals equals. This is a very common way to code. And what happens is that equals equals returns true or false depending on whether misspelled range dot location is equal to ns not found. That true or false is then given to return as a return value for our method. If you preferred, you could write this instead. If misspelled range is equal to that, then return true else return false. That does the same thing. I will undo it though. The shorter version is easier to read here. There we go. Much better. That completes the third of our missing methods. So the project's almost complete. Let's press Command R now to build the code, run it through, put it in the sim and see how it looks. 
So our word here is congests. I'll press plus, and my word's going to be stone. I press submit. That's good. I'll try another one. Let's do gone. That's good. And now let's try another one. Uh, G G H T Y. That has failed. It's not a possible word. We'll try cones. That's good. But let's try one that reads this T twice. So we have T E S. We'll try and use T again to make test. So we'll do uh, T E S T. And that should fail because using the letter T twice. Fantastic.